the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. We have a lot to do tonight, and um, we have to work with time. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me start by welcoming everyone, our online family, and all who are here. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Your life will never be the same after tonight, in Jesus' name. Um, we'll take a few minutes, just a few minutes to pray in the Spirit as we prepare for tonight. Now here's what will happen. Please listen. Every time here counts and we want to maximize the time as much as possible. As soon as we're done praying and you sit down, um, the ushers will start passing around with the communion. Just pick yours and you can just keep it so that when it's time to minister the communion, you can just pick it. That way we'll conserve time. Is that fine? Please may I request um that you just pick one don't pick more than one it's not necessary just pick one and pass it the same way you drop your offering just pick one and then pass and then when we're done and you minister the communion be patient please don't litter the ground just be patient the buckets will be passed and you just drop yours and um so that we make it orderly and we make it fast are you ready tonight in one minute i'd like you to pray in the spirit opening your heart for what the lord will be doing in our midst tonight everywhere everyone pray in the spirit shaprandege paratos kale prakasida lekete prandege barakas shada barakus yatabala let it be from the depth of your heart, your spirit connecting to the flow of what God is doing. You're praying in the spirit, the Bible says, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. We pray opening up our spirits. We pray opening up our minds. Shadibaratos kalibranda gadaprategu de belegatos. Let your word prevail over the issues of concern. In the spirit, Heba Shadi Malahasada Balakato Shabrebege de Balatusia, Nega de Barus, Keba Shanas, Kanima Hasia Lakato Brandi Gabadia, Lika Pretega de Balakatusa, British Katu Balatusia, Shabrin de Baras Subrati Caparatus Galibran Bagada Pratisa Pavia. Elanta po shala cruz kabila par haski de mama katusia. Ingrete beke tu pratash kada para katusa prete kete kete bala da bus. Demanda kaparon das kete bala haske de brandi kati ala hasida. Krakus shagada branda katusia kete bala tusia ta. Embra kata brandi kete bala kusia ta prates kete prati prahasia. You are expanding and enlarging your capacity to receive. One 
one more minute. Holy, holy, I will bow before my Lord and King. Hallelujah, you have come to us and you make all things new. Emmanuel. Jesus Christ, you never let me go. My shepherd king, you're watching over me. Emmanuel. Father, we pray and we ask that you make your presence mighty and manifest in our midst. Finally, tonight, let age long captivities be broken. Open our eyes, O God, and establish our authority. Let there be a manifest display of the victory of Christ over Satan, over curses over yokes and everything that does not name the name of christ we open our spirits and we ask you to help us and show us mercy in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you please be seated complete deliverance part three hallelujah Okay, so like I said, the ushers are going around. Just speak your communion and then don't be distracted. We're getting to the word. Um, we'll have sessions to pray, take the communion, and then we'll minister the power of the Holy Spirit. I am a believer in the Christian experience that is backed up with signs and wonders. I believe that Jesus is alive and I believe in the total and complete victory of Jesus. The defeat of Satan, the defeat of yokes and curses is a reality. And in this series, our intent is to establish that reality practically in our lives. Hallelujah. Please, I want to plead with you to do well to listen to part one again, listen to part two. Tonight, I'm happy, but then I'm also sad, and I'll tell you why, for both reasons. I'm happy because someone's captivity is coming to an end. I'm happy because tonight will be an opportunity to enlighten the body again, as far as the dynamics of um, the ministry of deliverance is concerned. But I'm sad because in preparing my notes for this night, I had to edit so many things. I, at a point in time, I, I had to just stop and rest my head and say, my God, to be able to do justice to this entire series in truth, I will tell you, it will require at least a six-part series, not just a three-part series. There are so many things I've had to take. In fact, the last time we did the mystery of deliverance, it was a four-part series. And this is now, we have to end for now. There are so many things that um, we need to know. But um, I may have to edit some of them. And then in teaching some of the things I'm teaching today, very sadly, I may not be able to press 
into the kind of depth that I would want to go. So this is where my sadness stems from. But then we have other series that are still related to this, and I hope that when we get there, we'll be able to just dot the I's and cross the T's. Albeit, we know that with what we have gotten tonight, it is sufficient alongside the ones that have come to grant us victory established in reality. If you are in agreement with me, say amen. amen. So let me apologize in advance. Honestly, I kept looking at my notes and wondering what I would teach and what I would omit because um, when it has to do with mentoring believers who thoroughly understand how to establish victory, you should not omit anything provided it comes from scripture. It is very important. The Bible says, lest Satan would take an advantage of us. And the advantage comes by his accessing the loopholes and the gaps in our spiritual understanding. But then we have to walk with the allowance that um, time has provided for us. Let me do a five minutes recap and then I'm holding my notes here. I hope you have yours. Praise the name of Jesus. Our text for this series has been John 8:36, the Amplified. John 8:36, the Amplified. It says, "If the Son sets you free, you are free indeed." It says, "Really and unquestionably free, really and unquestionably free." Part one, we began to discuss the biblical basis for the study of Satan and demons. We wanted to be sure that we're not walking in error as far as the word of God is concerned. And we examined a few scriptures that give us the allowance to study on Satan and demons. We looked at the biblical basis for the study of Satan and demons. Um, we looked at the Old Testament, the life and the ministry of Jesus. Jesus taught about the satanic kingdom he administered deliverance himself we looked at the life of the apostles and the early church they taught paul himself in his pauline epistles taught about the structure of the satanic kingdom and then he also taught uh, he administered deliverance then we looked at the origin of satan the origin of satan we couldn't do justice to the origin of demons the the concept of the Nephilims, the disembodied spirits, and this is one of the things that now make me feel sad because we couldn't really press for the kind of knowledge that we need to have um, to understand where these disembodied spirits come from because if you understand that, you will know why they crave for human bodies. Hallelujah. And that every time demons are not in a human body, they are in a perpetual state of torture and restlessness. That you can be sure. Jesus himself taught us that every time a spirit, demon spirits are within this territory and are not in a human or material body, there is a consequence for being in this realm and not having a material body. The consequence is torture because according to the law of territory, every spirit that resides within this domain must be resident within a material body so even the holy spirit when he comes he lives within the believers are we together so you can be sure of this that demons are under a state of perpetual torture and restlessness every time they are not within a human body now human bodies according to scripture are not the only bodies that demons can occupy they can occupy animals they can occupy all kinds of things but the reason why human bodies are the most preferred is number one we are the zenith of god's creation the most complex of all his creation and then number two authority was given to the believer the human it wasn't given to animals and plants and so satan is most comfortable to wreck his antichrist agenda when he operates in and through a human body so we looked at that and then we looked at um, a bit of the reality of evil in scripture, the fact that we live in a wicked world and that it takes understanding to be able to prevail. Part two, 
last week we considered the structure and the operations of satan and demons i hope you still remember we looked at the structure of satan um according to revelations we said that satan has angels and he fell together with a third of the angels and that satan alongside the demonic demons or evil spirits make up what we call the satanic kingdom we did emphasize that satan has a singular assignment to fight and frustrate the purposes of god by any means the theme that drives the activity of the satanic kingdom is to fight and frustrate the purposes of god but satan's unique goal and agenda is for transgenerational allegiance and dominion over the saints you have to understand this satan has his personal manifesto his personal agenda and the satanic kingdom as an organized demonic kingdom also have their manifesto are we together the drive for the entire satanic kingdom is to fight and frustrate the purposes of god by any means by any means sickness poverty delay retrogression causes yokes by any means but satan as the head of that kingdom has his unique agenda and the agenda is for complete dominance over the saints and then to create a system for transgenerational allegiance i told you this is where the whole idea of causes and demonic patterns and yokes come from they were a design to make sure that from one generation to the other allegiance towards satan remains um, a reality so we did we dealt with satan's operational system that satan and demons fight they hinder they resist they kill they steal they destroy and all of that and i did tell us last week that of all the strategies and the operations of satan the most pronounced in the bible is deception you still remember yes and that to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true usually for personal gain or to take an advantage of that person deception is to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true usually for personal gain we define deception or falsehood as a statement or an action that is intended to mislead hide the truth promote a false idea often for personal gain and we did say last week that deception cannot happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth there is no possibility for deception until the person doing the deceiving in this case satan you must be aware of the truth to be able to deceive so satan by this definition is not ignorant of the truth because deception is to deliberately manipulate someone to believe what is not true deception cannot happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth we now looked at a study on how satan operates i taught us last week that there are three levels of satanic influences i'm taking this because we have to connect from there to our teaching tonight that the first is called witchcraft and i did teach us that witchcraft necessarily does not deal with drinking blood eating flesh our traditional idea of witchcraft witchcraft simply means to cause you to think to cause you to act to cause you to talk in error using the tool of deception that is witchcraft all other traditional practices they may be expressions of deception but according to scripture deception means to cause a man to think to act and to talk in error using i mean witchcraft now using the tool of deception the second level is manipulation and control and i told us that this is largely in the realm of the mind and that believers even spirit-filled believers can be manipulated now you find out that every time you see or most times when you read scripture especially in the gospels when it has to do with demons and their victims it uses an english expression possessed 
now not all the greek words there mean possessed in fact most of the expressions is the word demonized the word demonized there does not mean it means to be under the influence or some level of control of demons we agreed that there is manipulation and control and that even believers can be victims of this and then the third level is complete influence and control we call that possession where your spirit your mind and your body comes under the total influence of that spirit we agree that a christian cannot be possessed by the definition of possessed now that means when you come into christ through the new birth experience you are joined to christ and the bible declares that he that is joined to christ remember is one spirit so a believer cannot be possessed but a believer can be demonized a believer can be controlled at the solical realm are we together yes now we define deliverance and i'll end my recap from that definition that deliverance essentially has to do with rescue and freedom from bondage from danger or evil the whole idea of deliverance has to do with rescue and freedom from bondage from danger and from evil deliverance has to do with salvation to salvage an individual from a condition or from an influence here is the definition of deliverance i gave us last week please listen if you have it down and you write if you do not have it down deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and the authority of jesus christ over satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and the destiny of a believer that means when we have to do with deliverance deliverance is a scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and the authority of jesus christ over satan and demons as it relates to the life and the destiny of the believer i wrote here deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer please listen is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it a very important thought that biblical deliverance is based on the fact that we are establishing and manifesting the victory that is in christ not fighting for it to fight for it in the sense of hoping we will get it is saying that the work of the cross was a lie are we together now when jesus said it is finished he meant it his victory over satan sin hell and the grave was total it was complete our assignment now is to engage the weapons of victory we have been given to establish and manifest that which is finished his finished work is the basis for our audacity to even dare to establish that so you have to understand this because there are many expressions of deliverance in the body of christ that does not really stem from the victory of christ that is already defeat from day one if you ever approach the subject of deliverance and satan demonology as though you are not sure of jesus's victory and you are not sure of satan's defeat you are hoping that as you contend you will find out who won that you are already defeated that ignorance is your defeat you don't need to be fought you are already defeated are we together so deliverance for a believer is about establishing and manifesting victory not fighting for it hallelujah so part three now we'll begin our discussion we'll be very fast may the lord grant us grace in jesus name um the chief sponsor i spoke last week let me also touch this that of all the manipulations of satan and the satanic kingdom and as complex and as complicated as it is world over there are only three access points remember that satan has only three access points as revealed from scripture there are only three access points by which satan and demons access men even believers number one covenants 
number two ignorance number three disobedience one more time number one covenants number two ignorance number three disobedience these are the only scriptural access points if satan ever has an advantage on the believer these are the only access points so if you can close these doors satan truly in experience will remain helpless over your life i taught you that of these three the most effective for satan strangely are covenants why because covenants are transgenerational in context and then covenants can be territorial your ignorance affects you your disobedience affects you even though it can spill to others but principally you are the chief victim but covenants can bring whole territories under the siege of satan on legal grounds that covenants are empowered by altars remember the teaching that an altar is a system of authorization that are built to make sure that the terms of the covenant keep running even when the initiator of the covenant is no longer there please understand this now that means if a covenant is set with the devil for poverty or for untimely death there must be an altar the altar is like the battery that powers that covenant the altar is a system of authorization and it is usually ratified with blood take note of blood because we'll be dealing with it very seriously are we together yes every altar is powered by blood the human blood animal blood whatever it is so the altar ensures that the terms of the covenant keep happening to the participants or the victims of the covenant even when the initiator is long gone so altars make covenants powerful covenants are not powerful in themselves altars are the systems of compliance that make sure that even though you were not there when the covenant was put in the altar will ensure that the covenant based on the terms of agreement it will fish you out and execute the terms to the latter let me tell you covenants are precise except unhindered they will happen exactly as agreed no matter your enlightenment you will be shocked and surprised the terms it will happen that way whether it is a covenant of whatever it is untimely death covenant of whatever it is you worship satan he will give you this if you violate it there will be consequences if covenants are not superimposed by the things that you're going to be learning today it will walk to the latter you can go abroad you can travel to europe you can travel to america the covenant will slowly haunt you there and with the precision of a surgeon it will execute everything as agreed most people think because you run away from the physical location where the covenant happened you are free this is the deception that has tied down people so just because you ran away from the village or you ran away from the place where the shrine was or even because you destroyed the shrine and set it on fire you can say it is done time will show whether it is truly done because covenants and altars are spiritual are we learning now both covenants listen carefully disobedience ignorance depend on a state there is something they look for in every human to walk this is called the flesh write it down oh dear i wish i had time we'll just touch on this quickly so that we will rush the concept of the flesh is one that i submit to you has not been thoroughly understood in the body of christ the reason for a justifiable reason when you read the pauline epistles and you you read about the frustrations of paul and believers um it, it makes you confused as to the flesh versus with respect to the victory that is in christ the flesh romans chapter 7 and verse 18 i'll just touch it very briefly and then we'll rush romans 7 
18 here's what paul said paul himself got to a point where he was venting his frustration he couldn't keep quiet again this is paul already in ministry for i know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing for to will is present with me he says but how to perform that which is good i find not paul then he began to speak when you read further he says for with my spirit i serve the lord but in my body i see another law walking in my members he was so frustrated he said oh wretched man that i am who shall deliver me from this body of death this was the apostle expressing his frustration i thought i now have victory in christ why then is this flesh alive in me When you read Galatians chapter 5 from verse 16 down to 21, particularly 16 and 17, let's look at it for reference. This I say then, Apostle Paul is speaking, walk in the spirit, he says, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 17, he says for the flesh, this is a very powerful information, the flesh lusted against the spirit, fight, contend and the spirit against the flesh he says and these are contrary one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would now let me clear that confusion by the spirit of god please look up revelation is powerful oh, in the name of jesus what you don't know can destroy you satan can use the gaps in your knowledge and confuse you and take an advantage of you now what believers do not know theologically is that the flesh what the flesh means to the unbeliever is not the same thing as what the flesh means to the believer listen carefully there is the flesh as a concept before salvation and there is the flesh as a concept after salvation they are all called flesh but the character of their operation is not the same let me just put that in perspective and we jump is that all right what is the flesh before salvation that means with respect to an unbeliever the flesh with respect to an unbeliever is called the sin nature do not forget this it is called the sin nature what is the sin nature it is a nature of speaking it is a nature of thinking it is a nature of acting it is a nature of living that will always be against the word of god i'll take it again the flesh before salvation this is the first dimension of our concept of the flesh according to scripture the flesh before salvation that means when you are dealing with the subject of the flesh with respect to an unsaved person the flesh means the sin nature a nature of speaking a nature of thinking a nature of acting and a nature of living that will always the key word is always always be against the word of god it's called the flesh furthermore i wrote this this is the very nature of satan at work in the spirit the mind and the body of the unregenerate man this is the very nature of satan at work in the spirit the mind and the body of the unregenerate man are we together yes so to the unbeliever when you mention the word flesh from a biblical standpoint now it means the embodiment of that sin nature the very nature of satan that was the nature that came upon man by reason of his fallen state when man fell among the many tragedies that happened to him was that he lost the life of god in replacement to that life he had and became an embodiment of the sin nature when the bible says he who knew no sin became sin jesus himself had to subscribe to that sin nature to destroy it this nature this sin nature that is exactly what the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus defeated that nature are we together now so the concept of the flesh to the unbeliever or before salvation has to do with the very nature of satan and that is what the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus 
a legitimate ground to cut you away from the influence of that life the very nature that the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus defeated is called the sin nature or you find it in the bible the flesh that is one side now when you are saved to the believer in christ sadly and strangely the bible also uses the concept of the flesh but now this time around the idea of the flesh with respect to one who is in christ does not necessarily mean the sin nature again there is a word for the flesh for the believer it is called self are you seeing that now self the nature of self we have a teaching in the nearest future to deal with this so i won't go into that that deep but if you have the chance to listen to my teaching sadly it's an audio christ-centered living please listen to it christ-centered living i teach there about self that all of the limitations of the believer in christ who although the victory of christ has conquered the sin nature that we call flesh there is still another dimension of of, of flesh that the bible calls self the inability to intentionally live your life with the consciousness that everything about you should glorify the lord is called self the bible says glorify the lord with your body which is the lord's so the nature of self that the bible calls flesh in the believer is what produces the numerous ills that now plague the believers that paul is saying look with my spirit i serve the lord but in my body even though i am saved i still see another law that does not negate the victory of christ this is self and the key to the defeat of that self is found in galatians chapter 5 verse 16 this i say walk ye in the spirit now you can see that the solution is not being born again not being saved he's talking to people who are already saved that you must walk in the spirit in fact he says set your affections on things above and not on the things that are earthly and then when you read on dealing with that again paul the apostle himself would tell you i die daily I crucify the flesh that nature of self that seeks it is because of the appetite for self glorification and vain glory the absence of the consciousness that you have been bought with a price that can open you up to a plethora of ills and he's saying the cure is to be spirit minded the cure is to deaden this flesh we'll look at it when we get to deliverance proper are you blessed now so let me just stop here for the flesh now you understand that when the bible talks of the flesh as dealing with the unregenerate man is simply talking of the sin nature there is no amount of counseling that will solve that problem that nature needs to be replaced completely and only the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus the life of god is the cure for that nature are we together when he expresses frustration oh wretched man that i am romans 7 who shall deliver me from this body of death then romans chapter 8 from verse 1 now began a discourse he said there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit verse 2 says for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death are we together administering deliverance let's deal with the administration of deliverance now now you'll be you'll be learning practically how to be free from demons how to be free from curses how to be free from yokes of darkness please listen to this first for yourself but listen so that God can use you as an envoy of deliverance for others. Are we together? In this kingdom, you don't just learn for yourself, 
for the promise is unto you and your children and your children's children as many as are far off even as many as the lord your god will call now there are three levels of deliverance write it down please complete an entire and total deliverance is in three levels this upfront explains the reason why many people experience what we call partial deliverance the bible is very clear jesus himself in his teaching about demons and how they operate told us that it is possible for a man to be temporarily free of demon spirits and then the demons reinforce and return back so that the state of that man is worse than what it was initially jesus is teaching here so we know for a shorty that it is possible for someone to be delivered sincerely and yet the deliverance is not complete can i be honest with you there are many many believers in this kingdom who are victims of this largely because of ignorance are we together most of what people call deliverance in the body of christ is only the first step of bible deliverance are you ready to learn number one the first level of deliverance i wrote here the first level of deliverance is casting out the spirit influences over your life and at the back of your challenges i'll take it slowly the first level of deliverance has to do with casting out the spirit casting out the spirit influences in your life and at the back of your challenges may i tell you that demons do not only possess and influence men they can possess conditions they can possess things hmm. a financial condition a spirit can enter that condition and it no longer becomes an economic condition listen there is a financial condition that is an economic condition and unassisted by any demonic means it should not it should not threaten you beyond the laws of economics if you obey the laws of economics it should bring that condition back to order but when that condition defy even your obedience a spirit has possessed that condition spirits don't just possess men they can possess things they can possess conditions so when we talk about casting out demons it does not only have to be out of men you can cast demons out of conditions. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salas kade bashka na kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto breka teke ne kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.